make those kinds of choices about what their priorities are. And I, <laughs> <laughs> Tarragon Theatre, for instance, had, I always believe, has had a good stock of shoes. I'm not even saying that because... <laughs> There's a question over there. Are there any questions over here? Uh, okay, we'll come back. Good. Okay. Yes, Mike, so we kind of... Perfect. <laughs> Uh, we've heard a lot of really interesting stuff about shoes that are challenging because of the athletic requirements, but I was wondering about shoes that have been really challenging and interesting from just the characterization point of view. One example I could give, it's been, it was uh, characterization certainly played a huge part in the development of it, and again, they were one of those shoes that we finally stopped prototyping after we had a two-year process uh, where the Gollum shoes for the Lord of the Rings. The character was played by Michael Terrio, who is such a physical actor. It is amazing to see the guy move on stage. And the, it was such, a, such an abstract character to begin with. Nobody, including Michael and the director, nobody knew how it was going to develop. They knew what they, how they didn't want it to develop. They didn't know how they wanted it, what they wanted it to be. So we were prototyping constantly, trying different materials that allowed uh, certain types of movement. And, and he, the, the, the man was practically a contortionist on stage. If anyone saw the show, he moved in an unbelievable way. And so what we needed was something that gave him the appropriate flexibility to be able to do what it, he did, and, uh, but as the character changed, the requirements changed as well. So suddenly he was doing these movements where he would just shift all his body weight from one side to the other, which then actually started putting some physical strain on him. So then you had to go back and start all over again to do something that allowed this type of movement, but also more support in certain ways. And uh, that was certainly one of the most interesting projects I've ever done because I've that is the hardest I've ever worked one-on-one -on -one with an actor to get a pair of shoes working. And the whole process literally spanned over two years because uh, fortunately we did not have another Gollum for the London production and we could continue the process. Uh, but it finally worked out by the opening of the second time through because it stopped changing at that point. And as well, you throw in you know, all the design ideas and trying to make that work and it became a bit of a nightmare, but at the same time, I felt so attached, and I guess part of his characterization because the shoes were so important to him that uh, it, it really kind of blew me away. It was a really, really fascinating process. And I haven't heard anything for a few months, so I think you like some stuff. <laughs> I have a little favorite shoe moment that's actually on Toronto stages right now. Um, I just finished doing a Daniel McIver play that's on at the Tarragon called How It Works, and there's two women in that play, uh, one played by Fiona Hyatt and one by um, Carolyn Gillis. And um, one of the characters uh, has a line reference in the play about liking the other woman's shoes. And somewhere along the line, the two characters, I felt from their costumes in overall that they had to be very far apart from each other. That there was never a time when I could walk into one of their closets and see something in one character's closet that I would find in the other character's closet. So when I was designing their clothes all together, somewhere along the line, um, I decided that the, that the one character played by Fiona Hyatt, every time she comes on stage, should have a different pair of shoes on. And that uh, it was a kind of a great fun thing to be able to sort of find her. And there's a scene where she's getting dressed to go on a date. And all she's doing practically is taking shoes on and off and changing shoes. So she had about, I don't even know how many pairs of shoes she's got by the end of the production. Um, and then the other character who's wearing jeans and a shirt and doesn't really pay too much attention about how she looks. We gave her really, uh, those really kind of practical, functional, thick-soled white running shoes that are sort of a few years out of date that look like uh, just lumpy shoes. And there's a scene when the two of them are together and Fiona crosses her legs and so, and the line, the one line that sort of drove all of this was that Carolyn's character looks at her and says, I love your shoes. 
and she's got her legs crossed too with this big lumpy sneaker on it and she says I'm I'm just crazy about shoes and and it gets a laugh every night because you look at her and you go my god that woman you know how could she pause and then there's a pause which she makes and then she says but I can't wear them because I've got really terrible feet but it's like such a little moment of dramatic joy because the line she's saying and what she's wearing on her feet are so far apart from each other and that the fact that the other character has, has endless pairs of shoes, you know, it's, it's just a really great little dramatic moment and, and yet I don't think anybody would ever think that we sort of planned it out that consciously. So anyway, go see the play, you'll see that moment. <laughs> There we go, I'm, right there. Yep. I'm gonna, since I have the mic, I'm going to ask sure. a quick question. Um, I know that you studied with Sean at York, is that right? Yes. Um, do you go to shoemaker school? Or? Uh, I, the, <laughs> the last thing I imagined, you know, even 10 years ago was that I would get into shoemaking. So when I, when I met Sean back in university, as I was studying for set and costume design. I wanted to be a set and costume designer like Sean. And, uh, <laughs> But uh, that didn't last very long, and through a very bizarre turn of events, I ended up in shoes, and it was by no means my intention. I ended up accepting a job for uh, the Lion King when it came here as a shoe coordinator, because they needed somebody, and I was working on a farm and needed work, and uh, it was a six-month contract. I said, why not? Moved back to Toronto, and uh, just loved it. And re so as a result, all the work or all the learning that I've done has really been on the job. There are shoemaking schools out there, uh, nothing in Canada. I don't think there's anything even in the States anymore. In, you know, in Holland, in Italy, there are, there are some, but uh, I personally learned uh, I, on the job. I had the fortunate uh, luck of working with a couple of great shoemakers when I was first starting out. Uh, Fred Mike Comrie, who Unfortunately, no longer makes shoes, but he was uh, one of the Stratford shoemakers. He really showed me the ropes when I was first learning. And then after a couple of years working for the Mervishes, I ended up at Stratford Festival and was working with a phenomenal period shoemaker uh, by the name of Margaret Hubley, who uh, is based out of Halifax. And I had the opportunity to learn a lot from those two, but everything else has just been a lot of trials and a lot, a lot of errors and just trying to figure it out. <laughs> You've talked about uh, the great ingenuity and uh, uh, hardships and heroics in getting these challenging shoes. Um, have you ever had the case where you say, you know, let's just change the sequence and the timing a little of this show <laughs> and the problem goes away? <laughs> I, I have uh, the unfortunate ability to not say no to people when they ask for things. I, I love the challenge of what I do, and you know it's very, very, very rare where I'll say, no, this can't be done. It's like, okay, how do we do it? Fortunately, a lot of the time, somebody else, such as the designer or the actor, will say, no, this can't be done, which makes life a lot easier. But <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's up to me, I'll try my best just to, to get it on stage. Uh, I don't, nothing pops into my head right now that I have ever said, this is impossible, we can't do it. Often there'll be compromises, which I think is natural in any, in, in any process that involves so many people. But uh, yeah, I don't, I can't think of, there are ones which I wish we could get, give up on completely, but I can't think of anything that we've ever not I, worked. I don't think anybody works in theater because it's easy. Like I, I, I genuinely think that the people who uh, commit to spending their lives doing that kind of work, whatever it is, um, it, it's not because you're going to get rich. Uh, it's it's because it's it's because it is constantly changing and it is always challenging and it is always taking you into corners of, of challenges and problem solving that are, are never going to be the same. Even if you're doing the same play 
I've done more than one production of Glass Menagerie. Uh, I've done three productions of Love Flavors Lost. I mean, every time you do that play, it's going to be a different interpretation too, and it's going to be a different cast, and it's going to be a different location and a different audience. And and so, to me, one of the things about working in theater in general is is how do you make it look effortless? That's that's much more interesting than how do you make the hard part easier, although it hurts sometimes, <laughs> but I think. Um, as, as Michael mentioned, I'm with Kate Barris, um, president of the Theater Museum, so I want to thank all of you for coming to this uh, event. Um, Part of our mission is to help people appreciate theater more. And while I know we're not supposed to be looking at the shoes and we're not supposed to be looking at the costumes, um, it's great that you now have a little more of an appreciation of what goes into making those costumes and those shoes and helping the actors do what they're supposed to do. So I thank you for thank you. illuminating that. And um, I want to thank the Bada Shoe Museum for allowing us to come here and working with us on this event, which has been great. And not only have they allowed us to come here, but they've um, uh, donated a little thank you for our, our, uh, our panelists, a, a book all about shoes. And there's also a, uh, a membership for a year oh, for each of you. So oh, wow. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank look you forward to it.